In the early days of email, and by that I mean maybe the early 1990s through early 2000s or so, we had to use a fairly simple format for email because at the time there were so many different email programs and not a whole lot of standards that if we tried to do anything fancy with the messages we sent, it either looked strange to the recipient or they just couldn't read it at all. Well, fortunately, those days are long gone, but we do still have three formats to choose from when creating an email in Outlook, and they deserve just a few minutes of our attention. We have a couple of samples that will show us visually how these things are alike and also how they are different. Now, the original format for email was something called plain text. Plain text was just what it sounds like. It was plain text. We couldn't have anything more than a single font. It used to look like a typewriter font. Now it looks a little nicer, but still only one font with nothing else. Spaces, line breaks, and paragraphs are pretty much the only features that we can have in a plain text message. Now remember, at the time, way back when email started, most computers used even monochrome monitors, so plain text was all that was possible even under the best of circumstances. We can still send plain text messages. We can see in this message that there are some different things that we can notice about it. You may not notice offhand that it just has one font, but it does. And maybe most importantly is if we look up at the top, we see that the image that has been inserted must go in its own field with the header of the mail. It's not in the body of the message. Now, we may not care too much about that yet. It's just something to notice. The benefit is that literally everyone with email can read a plain text message. The drawback? Well, it's boring, and especially if it's a long or complex message, it gets hard to even differentiate between different sections and topics. So, enter our second option. The second option to come onto the playing field was a rich text message, or RTF. This was a major advancement in messaging, because with RTF, we can now do all kinds of wonderful things. If we look at our sample message, we can put in multiple fonts, we can add colors, we can even add bullet points. And if we continue to look, we not only can place attachments right in the body of the message, maybe even where we happen to be talking about that particular file, but we can even place images in the body of the message as well, and they show up as actual pictures. All of these different features make our messages more engaging and more readable. In the early 2000s, some business email clients still required plain text, but a majority had moved to being able to read rich text, so it became the standard rather than the exception. Actually, rich text worked pretty well, and most of us probably didn't notice when the third format began to kind of sneak its way in. That third format is HTML. If we look at an HTML message, it looks very similar to rich text. Multiple fonts, colors, bullet points. We can see, however, that even though we can put a picture in the body of the message, when we actually attach other types of files, they do need to be placed in the header of the email instead of in the body of the message like they could be with rich text. Other than that, rich text and HTML tend to look very similar. But the main difference is rich text is about formatting text, whereas HTML is all about formatting. That means that we can not only include colors and fonts, but also the ability to add things like tables and scrolling text and ensure that when things are positioned, they're going to be positioned correctly. In fact, we can even include video and sounds with an HTML message. We also saw the influx of web-based email providers like Google and Yahoo about that time. And since their client actually is a web browser, then having HTML as the format, which is a web page format, was kind of a no-brainer. It just made sense. That's why HTML has now become the standard for almost all email that's sent these days. These three email formats still exist and can be used in Outlook as we've seen here. HTML is a standard for most people. Since HTML also has the international standards behind it, we can be mostly assured that when we send this type of message, it's going to look the same way when we send it as it will when people receive it. That's one of the reasons it is such a good choice. Plain text, on the other hand, for the most part, has been laid to rest for all except the most diehard who still want to believe that they are purists by not embracing new technology. Many of these people are also the ones who try to argue that there is no benefit to Windows and that DOS still rules. Well, I'll just say to each their own and I'll pick my battles carefully. So make of that what you will. But for most of us, embracing the latest technologies and latest formats like HTML make things a little bit more engaging and a little bit more real world. Rich text is kind of the last one then, and it's now become the wild card where it used to be the standard. Until recently, rich text was the Outlook default, but in recent versions, HTML has taken over as a default in Outlook as well. If where we work or the people we send messages to have some kind of issues with any of these formats, 
we may need to stick with one or the other. And we certainly want to follow any guidelines that our company or organization may have. But if not, then I'd suggest just leaving HTML, which is the Outlook default. It makes a more universally accepted format and has the ability to create beautiful, rich messages that will carry our message and get it read. Now that we have a little bit of background on the types of formats, what they can do, what their advantages and disadvantages are, the only thing we have left is to actually see how we would apply these different formats to messages in Outlook.